Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. We are in the Ultra Series right now. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on playing with this Rayquaza and Groudon team that we kicked off with in the episodes on the channel yesterday. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. The team is always is down in the description below. There is a Raw Paste, a Poker Paste, and if you enjoy this sort of content, just a little reminder to make sure you drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss all of the other Pokemon content that we do have lined up for you in the coming weeks. Especially with Sword and Shield coming out as well. So things getting very exciting very soon. And um, leave your comments down below. Let me know what your thoughts were. If you saw the games yesterday. If you if you checking out the games today. What you thought of them. And what you think of the team in general as a build as well. It's quite a standard kind of uh, requires a ground on build. But, uh, and there could be a lot of room to kind of manipulate it put your own kind of twists on it as well uh, depending where you see fit and that's one of the things I wanted to do um, Kunal Shade actually passed me the, the pace of this team so it's literally just the pace that uh, he's passed me and what I kind of like to do with standard teams is maybe pick them up sometimes, have a few games with them learn how they're, they're operating where their weaknesses are and then think about hmm okay we're not really using this element of the team or this aspect of the team or this combination of the team can we change things up to maybe improve this matchup which we've been really struggling with and if you take notes you know when you're playing and you're practicing on showdown and things like that and you can highlight the common trends and common teams that you're having a lot of issues with and combinations that you can't really deal with or board positions that you find yourself in and you think I've got no way out of my opponent sets this up. So that's where you're looking to really think, right, well, I'm not using this element of the team. We're having mad issues with this kind of core, this pairing. Uh, this is what I'm going to do to adapt the team, put my own spin on it, and it'll improve the team going forward, especially in the current format. And hopefully you see a little better results with it. If you don't see the results kind of improving with those changes, then you think, right, well, let's go back to the drawing board, see why we're not... Um, having the success we think we are what's the problems here is it a speed issue is it a speed control issue is it a typing issue or is something else becoming a bit more of a threat so lots of different elements but that's kind of how i go about putting my own spin on a lot of teams um, and i think it's good to do that as well because it gives you that little bit of unpredictability that your opponent's not so or like they don't know every single detail about the team before you go into the match and that's one of the things that you've got Kind of going against you if you're playing a standard team uh, and your opponent's quite well versed in practicing, they know the format quite well, they're going to know that team. And uh, if you've got little hidden gems within there, they're the things that can really tip a match one way or the other. They're not going to expect a certain attack or a certain switch or a certain Pokemon to be a thing. Um, I mean, great examples of this is looking at Mr. Jamie Boy. He always brings the unexpected and he always really catches his opponents off guard and he, he exploits the lack of knowledge that his opponents have for these maybe not as well-known Pokemon. So, you know, take take lessons there, take heed. Again, we're not finding opponents very quickly. So what I'm going to do after that, that uh, lecture, Tuesday morning lecture, um, we'll cut it here and we'll come back when we do find our first opponent of the episode. So we'll be right back. And we've got Seba de uh, Roger. Seba de Roger. I don't know how I say it, but uh, it's a nice name. Mori Veltel. We'll get into team preview. Okay, so we got Incineroar, Veltel, Metagross, Groudon, Melotic. You don't see that very often. And Tapu Lele. So, um, okay, it's quite an interesting call. It's going to be Groudon and Veltel. Uh, this is. This combination is picking up a little bit more usage recently, and I think it's on the back of Lunala and the Ultra Necrozma and Normal Necrozma is kind of picking up uh, usage. Um, you got the Metagross is the steel type of the team, trying to help cover the uh, Xerneas and Fairy weakness for the Veltal. Um, but where can we exploit this team? Tailwind is going to be something that we can utilize, I think, um, because if the Velta hasn't got Tailwind, if it's an Assault Vest variant, then it is going to be difficult for my opponent to keep up pace with us. We will go Suicune. I don't think my opponent's got very many great options to deal with Suicune. Um, and I think we want Tapu Koko here. It does help against the Veltal, definitely overwriting the terrain. Uh, the Melotic as well doesn't like facing down against Koko. And then we definitely want our restricted. Uh, we want stacks for sure. And I think we'll go Ray as well because Ray's just generally amazing, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll lock in with these. Pretty happy. Let's see how we get on this first one today. 
Let's get off to a good start. And let's get some wins and some consistency. I feel like one of the problems I had coming back into the Ultra series and getting a bit more serious about it since the Roulette series finished is just the consistency, lack of consistency. Um, and I know it's best of the one, so it's not going to be the same as tournaments, but I still feel like we'll win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, win one, lose one, lose one. You know, and it feels a little bit like that when it should be a little more where we are. Uh, winning a little more in streaks but i think the one thing to pick up from that is the fact that um it's difficult in this format where it's so diverse you've not really got the same kind of bubble of teams that you're always going to see in other formats it's very diverse and there are, uh, everyone's using something different so there's always going to be things that make different um Different teams harder than others. Uh, okay, so we'll set up a tailwind. I don't really... Do I protect? Do I protect? Or do I vault switch out on the Metagross? It's definitely an option for us. Uh, I don't think that... The thing is, I think the Milotic probably protects if it's got it. And the Metagross, I feel, wants to probably go for a Stomping Tantrum to catch the, the type of Coco out. And I don't really want to lose Coco so early on. Um, because if we lose it... Melotic and Ivelto will become very difficult for us to deal with. So we are going to see Groudon hit the field. Um, unless this Metagross protects, then we're going to be able to pivot out with Coco and get a Tailwind set up. So we're in a nice position. There's the Groudon activating its desolate land. Metagross going to Mega Revolve. First out with Mega Metagross. I was talking the other day with the, the guys in the Patreon chat on Discord. Uh, talking about how Metagross and Steel types used to be generally busted like back when Steel was the first thing it used to resist like Dark and Ghost and other stuff <laughs> it's pretty insane um, okay do we bring in Rayquaza or do we bring in Groudon I mean if we're suspecting a Stomping Tantrum there it makes sense to bring in Rayquaza doesn't it just to avoid that uh, damage there and then we can pressure the ground on the next turn with a, a scald if we want to or maybe even go for the, the metagross but we're actually going to see a zen headbutt wow okay ground on would be definitely the better option to bring in there okay um ba -ba 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 -bum. now we could go for the scald into ground on or is it too obvious there i think it might be a bit obvious i think we could go for the scald into the metagross mega evolve do we want to lose Rayquaza right now though? That's the thing. I really, I would prefer not to lose Rayquaza. Um, the Groudon's going to switch out for sure. We could Scald the Metagross. We'll go down to another, we will go down to another Zen Headbutt, which is a bit of a problem. Um, we might be better off just preserving Rayquaza for later on in the game and bringing in Groudon. So let's try this. Oh, we've scalded and brought in Groudon. What are we doing? I can't believe we've just done that. Oh, my God. We're such fools. Okay, well. The Groudon on the opposing side of the field will switch. Or it will protect. It's not going to attack. Yeah, there we go. So it's going to retreat. Milotic probably coming back in. Yeah. We're going to go for one of those cheeky... Um, Scalds, and I can't believe we just did that and an ice punch. Okay, well, I mean, could could be worse. <sighs> when you do something and you're like, oh man, what what are we doing? What are we doing, really? Uh, all right, well, let's let's bring in. Let's not bring in Ray because we'll activate the scald. Let's bring in Coco and let's go for a precipice blades. We could go for an eruption as well, uh, but we'll go for a... Mm, let's go for an eruption, just in case the Veltal decides to come out into the field, which it may do. I can't believe we just did that. I literally can't believe we just did that. At least we scouted the um, the Ice Punch, at least. Uh, Melotic going to attack. The eruption are going to be doing too much damage, but I mean, we've got Coco back onto the field now. Coco is going to be able to pressure the Metacross. Um, and we can go for a yeah, an icy wind. Okay, that's fine. I think we've got one turn of tailwind left, right? At least I hope we have. Yeah, one turn left. Okay. 
So Metagross pretty much has to switch out now. Um, so I'm going to just Volt switch out on the Metagross. And I'm going to go for a Precipice Blades. And we'll ignore the Melotic again. Because I think we leave the Melotic till later on in the game. If my opponent wants to switch in the Groudon, then they're going to take a Precipice. If they want to switch the Metagross out to possibly a Veltal, they'll take a Volt switch. So either way, we're kind of covering bases in this slot. And getting rid of the Metagross will be, it'll be make things a lot easier for us going forward in this match. And I think with Coco, we want to pivot into Suicune. So you can get another Tailwind up. Just got to hope that our Precipice Blades hits here. Come on, Groudon. Oh, well, I mean, it misses the Melotic, but at least it hits the Metacross. That's the, the main thing here for us. Probably see another Icy Wind come out. Yep. It does make getting something out onto the field a lot more difficult with Melotic firing these Icy Winds off because whatever we switch in will take an Icy Wind. Uh, so that's whether or not we want to potentially get a Tailwind up, protect Groudon, and if Groudon comes onto the field then we just Earth Power and just let our own Groudon go down at that point. Which may not be a bad idea. But I think my opponent's probably always got to be aware now that we've got the Rayquaza in the back, so we could potentially switch Groudon out for Rayquaza, go for a Scald. That's got to be something in the back of their mind. We are going to see the Yveltal actually hit the field now. Um, okay. This is why we need Cuckoo. But we can... I think we'll get we'll get a Tailwind up. Do we switch anything in? I don't really want to switch Coco in, to be honest. I mean, we could switch Coco in. Yeah, let's do that. Let's switch Coco in. It's going to take dark type attacks a lot better. I don't really feel like there's anything like massively apparent that's going to be able to knock us out. I think Melotic's not going to go for a Scald. We're going to see Tailwind from Yveltal. Uh, we're probably just going to see another Icy Wind. Yeah. This is what makes it difficult. The Melotic is a pain. Pain to deal with. Um... Our speed dropping on Suicune. Suicune's like the last thing in the world right now. But we do match Tailwinds. And the Velta will be the fastest thing, I would imagine. The Electric Train is going to disappear. Right. Um, now. We'll just Ice Beam the Velta. I think get some damage there. And we'll try and get a Volt Switch out into Malotic. Like, we should be faster than a Malotic now. With our... Okay. We're going to see the Groudon come in. That's not I wonder what the Veltal goes for. It's got the Dog Z, it may go for it now. Veltal just protects, so that's that's fine, I think. I don't really mind that too much. And we've got a really nice opportunity to actually get the Groud on if we want with Suicune. Because I think Suicune will probably take a double a double up. So we can actually go for the Scald onto the Groud on and switch into Rayquaza. We may end up losing Ray at this point. But it will be totally worth it if we can get rid of the Groudon. Like, it's a good trade, I feel, at this point, anyway. It's going to be the Z-move. I don't know if it'll be enough to get the Suicune, though. I really don't. Suicune's just too bulky. Hopefully this just procs a berry. Black Hole Eclipse. Yeah. I mean, it's a strong Z move, but I feel like Suicune's stronger. What's with, like, every every Veltal critting us? Like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't... Uh, what can you do? What can you do? Uh, right, okay. Now, I'm gonna, I've got that damage calculator open still, so let's have a quick look. Suicune. Let's see, Z move... Uh, okay, nope, that doesn't do it. Uh, even with, let's see, 
Okay. No. No. That doesn't do it. And then let's go. Let's go max modest, which it will not do with dark pulse as well. Let's have a quick look at that. Yeah, no one, yeah, no one, yeah. Berry range every time. Um, okay, so we need to be a little bit careful here because I think the Groudon, uh, the Veltal was probably pressured a little bit. But, I mean, let's go Twinkle Tackle into the Veltal and let's go Mega Evolve and Sword Stance. We see the Veltal protect here. Okay, well, we're not, we're going to see the Groudon switch out. A lot it come onto the field. I don't really mind this at all. As long as you get the Veltal here, which you should do with the Twinkle Tackle. Veltal probably protects though. That's the only, only thing we've kind of... Mm hmm Okay, the Veltal protecting. Man! Ah! Crits. You gotta love them. You gotta hate them. Come on, Coco. Let's crit through this up, uh, <laughs> through the protect. Let's do this. Get some revenge. Never mind. Right. Let's see what damage this does. It's not gonna do a great deal. I wouldn't have thought. Nah. Not enough. But probably a thunderbolt probably gets it. And we still got a tailwind active at this point. Yeah, both Tailwinds hit her out. Thunderbolt will get Eveltal, for sure. And a Dragon Ascent will get Melotic. It's just whether or not... Like, Ray should take a Sucker Punch from this range. I'm going to say we will take a Sucker Punch from this range. And I'm going to say Dragon Ascent plus two will definitely get the Melotic. Thunderbolt, straight up. Oh, the Strong Winds, of course. No! Forget about the Strong... Uh, okay, we're going to lose... Um, if we say Tailwind here, it's not too bad. We, we're still all right. It's not the end of the world. It really isn't. But if we see an attack into the rear, that could be bad. Tailwind, okay, that's way better for us. Because we can get the Eveltal with an extreme speed. The Groudon's going to be way, way difficult to deal with, though. Depends if it's got Fire Punch as well. Because the Fire Punch will do a chunk a massive chunk of damage to us. Okay. But even though the tailwinds went up, I still kind of prefer that to losing something here. We'll just double protect here because I'm just going to try and stall out this tailwind, see what this Groudon's going to be going for. And maybe the opposing Eveltal protects as well. Do we take a fire punch or minus one in the sun? I don't know. From this range, maybe, probably, probably. I think we'll barely hang on. So if we can get rid of the Veltal, we should be able to deal with the Groudon and stall out the Tailwind. Yeah, Veltal protecting. Okay, that makes sense. Because I think our Groudon will be faster than their Groudon. I would hope it would be. And we'll probably see a fire punch here from the opposing Groudon. Like, we could have been really cheeky and went, oh, okay. That changes things quite a bit. Well, do oh, does it? Does it really? Because I think we still extreme speed the Veltal. Like, we've got to extreme speed it because it just sucker punches us otherwise. Or extreme speed the Groudon. I think we dazzle to get some chip onto this Groudon. And then we go for an extreme speed into the Veltal. The other option is that, well, other option is we switch Ray out to Groudon, hoping that a Fire Punch comes into that slot. Then we Dazzle, take down the Eveltal, and then we got Ray to bring back in. Yeah, okay. But there's one turn of Tailwind left. This is doing nothing. Okay, well, I mean, it's better than nothing, really, isn't it? It's better than nothing. It's going to come down to whose Groudon's faster, and I'm hoping that it's going to be ours. We've got one turn of Tailwind to stall out. And we are max speed Groudon. So an Earth Power and a Dazzle should be enough to get the opposing Groudon. You've got to hope, anyway. 
Right, let's just protect Coco and protect our Groudon. Stall out this Tailwind and then everything will be all right, I hope. It's gonna be so close though. Watch that max speed jolly or something. That'll be the worst. I mean, we can kind of gauge like an idea, I think, of how fast this Groudon potentially could be um, by the makeup of their team. Let's have a quick look at what they've got. So the Tailwind pit is out, that's great. The electric train going, doesn't matter about that. Um, and let's take a quick look at there. Come on, DS, load. Right, how have they got? Mm, see, they've got no, they've got no trick room in their team, which kind of makes me think they're probably quite speedy with their ground on. But we'll go for it. We'll see. We'll earth power and we'll dazzle. It's all in the hands of the stats now. Who's got the faster ground on? Tapu Koko is super fast, so we get a nice little bit of chip there. We win the speed tie. We should have enough to take it down. We do. Come on. Okay. Despite that huge, horrible crit earlier on that put us in the worst position ever, we have managed to come out on top there and take a win for us today. And uh, I'm super happy about that. Super happy. Good game to my opponent and um, a really nice way for us to kick off with today. So that was a bit of a long one, wasn't it? It was a bit of a long one, but uh, all very worthwhile. And... A very well played Evelto Groudon team did not make it easy for us to play. And I think the Melotic there, like these bulky water types, are trend kind of seeping through this week, I feel. It's bulky water types. I mean, Suicune's doing so much work for us, and you saw in that match there with the Melotic. The problem is with Melotic as well, you can't Icy Wind it back because it just gets those competitive boosts. That's so such a strong Pokemon. Uh, let's go with. Um... Enter the Ultra Beast. We'll go with that. And hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent of the episode. Ah, oh, that feels good. I feel like that was a well-fought victory there. Um, and just really tough, really tricky. And that's why, like, Velto Groudon's a very good call. Um, they cover each other so well. And when Velto's played well enough, especially with the Z-move, it's just... In a horrible Pokemon to sometimes face up against. But we got Nick next from Italy, so we'll go straight into team preview. Uh, Nick playing a team of Rayquaza, Lunala, Incineroar, Hoganamaru, Bravery, and that Tapu Fini. So another Pokemon that benefits from any stat drops with that uh, Defiant ability on the Bravery. Kind of making it difficult for us to bring Incineroar in this one. Um, so we could going to be decent for us here. Uh, what we're gonna see I think mainly I would say this team really goes for more of a tailwind uh, option rather than a trick room because there's not really anything here that would benefit from a hard trick room mod so tailwind feels like the way that my opponent would be going here uh, talking tomorrow gonna be a bit of a pain for us to deal with of course as always um, I think we do want incineral here yeah for the Rayquaza maybe not to lead with it though because of that bravery could maybe go with stacks and we could go ground on Coco because Coco even though there is the Togo tomorrow there uh, we do have the Ferium that can do pretty well or oh, the other thing is we go Suicune ground on uh, which we were talking about in previous episodes maybe Incineroar in the back and then our own Rayquaza but then we do leave Coco I don't really like even Coco, especially when there's a Tapu Fini there. It kind of puts a lot more pressure on things like Rayquaza to get set up and deal with it. Uh, and Groudon as well. Whereas Coco kind of opens the door up for us. Way more against things like the, the Bravery as well. It can cause us all sorts of problems. Okay, well we're going to see that and the Lunala come out for my opponent. So, um, let's see. Now I know that the, the, the Bravery is base 80, so our Groudon is going to be faster than it. Unless it's Scarfed. So an Eruption will, would be able to take it down, I would say. It's just whether or not we take an attack from the Lunala in the process, which wouldn't be good. So we could potentially Eruption and Tailwind here. 
And I think I'm just going to click in with that. Because if I can get rid of this bird early on, it makes life a lot easier for Incineroar to come in and cycle Intimidate later in this game. You can see an icy wind come out from the Nala. It's not something that you commonly see. Icy wind? Ooh. It's weakening our eruption, but it still should be nice and powerful. And uh, break the Shadow Shield on the on the Lunala and uh, it doesn't take down the bird but we do see it go for a tailwind uh, we do match tailwinds with them so it's not the worst thing in the world um, the icy wind play though it's a nice play especially with the tailwind it gives my opponent a little bit of an advantage there um, what we'll do is go for hmm, I don't think we want to go for an eruption. We could just go ice beam and get rid of the uh, the bird. I think that might be a nice way to do it. Uh, I don't think you can really leave the grad on unchecked either at this point, because if you do, you're taking an eruption. And I think you've got to like concentrate down on it with probably Lunala. Maybe you see Zemu from the bird, and it might be into Suicune, but I think Suicune's bulky enough uh, to take a combination of attacks. Gonna see Moon Ghost Beam. They may be doubling into um, Suicune here. And if they have, I mean, that's a really nice play for my opponent. They made the right call there. Uh, Red Bird, yeah, they're doubling in. Come on, Suicune, please take this. Please take it. You can do it. Ah, oh, you're, you're too good. You're too good, Suicune. Okay, that's nice. I mean, Pokerberry. It's a nice play for my opponent. And we're getting, like, a little bit punished for not taking advantage of that potential double up there. Uh, protecting ground on my opponent, knowing that we're probably going to do that. Because I do expect a Z move on that Lunala, in all honesty. Um, Maria Quas are going to hit the field now, but it's a nice opportunity for us to get our Incineroar onto the field now. Um, and do we Ice Beam or do we Snarl? Um. I don't really want to leave the Lunala that unchecked. I'd rather get rid of the Lunala if I can. So getting a Snarl onto it will put it... It probably won't pick up the knockout, but it's going to do a decent amount of damage to it and put it close to being knocked out. And the nice thing is we've got Intimidate and then we've got the Fake Out support going into the next turn as well. So there's the Intimidate onto the Lunala, onto the Rayquaza more importantly there. Potential physical attacker of the team. Are they going to double into the Suicune again, though? That's the, the question. And it makes you wonder whether uh, leaving Groudon just out on the field and attacking would have been the better thing to do. Because they're not really concentrating down on it. But maybe because we protect the last turn, it makes sense to do that. I'm going to see a Sword Sands come out from the right. Yeah. And there's the Z move. And this probably. Well, I don't know. If I was my opponent, I'd probably be going into the Suicune to get rid of the speed control. Um, I'm going to have to cut this. So we'll be okay, but it's into the Incineroar, so it was into that Groudon slot, which is little, works out a little bit better for us. Do get a Snarl off, break a potential Sash on that Rayquaza, and do some nice damage to that Lunala as well, uh, as the Tailwind is going to pitter out on both ends. Uh, no, it's not quite. Um, now... Fake out. Ah, it's a plus one that, like, it is scaring me a bit. I really want to get Incineroar off the field now. I really do. Um, we could bring in Groudon. I just think the, the Suicune will go down to... Hmm... I'm just going to Snarl again, because I feel like... The ray, I can't really switch anything in now. Uh, we want to be able to get another Intimidate onto my opponent's Rayquaza before it gets too out of control. We're not going to switch out. We're going to see Tapu Fini come onto the field. is isn't ideal because it can carry Heal Pulse. Um, and I don't, I reckon it. Okay, that's the annoying thing. Like The Rayquaza are not protecting there when we could have actually got an attack off. Okay, well, that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we will lose our speed control, I think, this next turn, because I think it makes it makes so much sense to go into the Suicune. 
Um, did you see the, the type of any scald here? Maybe. I'm going to hard switch into Groudon here with with um, Incineroar, and I'm going to go for an Ice Beam into the Ray. But there's no reason for my opponent not to target Suicune here with their Rayquaza. Like in a plus one Dragon Ascent, unfortunately, will get us from this range. I don't think we can survive that. Like, for full health, then yes, I think we probably take that. But not from like 55 60%. For some unbeknown reason, though, if they go for another Sword Science, get greedy, we'll take them down with an Ice Beam here. But we are going to see a Dragon Ascent. Unless they want to get rid of the Incineroar, which they don't, unfortunately. Um, but. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We do lose Suicune. Um, but. Let's see what this type of Finny goes for. Heal Pulse. <coughs> not ideal. Not ideal at all. It really isn't. It is not good. Uh, we need to get Incineroar in. Um, <laughs> and I think we probably want to get our own Rayquaza onto the field as well. Right now. Um, oh, it's risky though because... It is risky, I feel like, because if we get our own Incineroar... Okay, what I'll do is I'll go Eruption just to get some damage off and I'm going to go Fake Out into the ray. It's just whether or not the ray protects or not. I'm not going to. I'm just going to go for this. Okay, ray going to switch out. Alright, well that's fine. And then we'll get rid of the Lunala at least. And we'll, oh, the Finny protecting. So it's got protect heal pulse. Okay, the ray kind of. Um, I'd imagine the ray's got a berry, right? It's going to come in with the Delta Stream. We've got knock off on Incineroar though, so if it does go for. I mean, we can potentially. What are we going to see the type of Finny go for? It's probably going to go for a Scald, right? What would I rather do? Would I rather lose? I mean, the play to do, I think, here is going to be lose Groudon, get a Precipice Blades into this Finny, go for a U-turn into the Ray. And if we can U-turn out, then we've got Fake Out Sword Stance the following turn with our Rayquaza. We just need to get damage on this Finny now, I think that's the big thing. If Finny goes for a Scald, let's go for a Moonblast. Huh. Okay. Ah, I wanted the Groudon to go down there. That's the only thing. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll bring in our ray. Because maybe another Precipice Blades gets the the Finny. Potentially. Hmm. We'll go for another precipice. And I'm just gonna protect Rayquaza here. I really want I really want the Groudon to go down here. Never really say this very often, but okay, the Finny gonna protect. Okay, that's fine. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's going for another one. It's going for another one. Okay. <laughs> Things just got way worse. Way, 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 way worse for us. Um, all right, I think you have to target the ray here. I think what we'll have to try and do is go for an eruption and bring in Incineroar. Oh, and we're just going to see heal pulse. That's the problem. And we're going to lose Incineroar. This is what you get for leaving a ray quasi with Swords Dance alone. If we're not like checking it at any point, just letting it get these Swords Dances up. Too worried about switching in Ray early on, I think, um, and taking potentially an icy wind from the Finny. But it does have Moonblast as well, so 
it might have it might have the Z move. Oh no, it can't have the Z move. Lunala had the Z move. So we're here switching out. At least we're getting into it. But this requires a back down to plus two. Oop. Um and if we've got any if you target the ground on here, we've got that ball position that we want. Okay. Well, instead we're not taking that. But we are gonna get an eruption off. It's not really gonna help us very much. Um, definitely puts a Finny in range for a Precipice Blades. Depending on how fast the Rayquaza is as well, like how fast the opposing Rayquaza. Has it even protected? Like, has it protected? I don't know if it has protected. Um, well, we've got to make, I think, some sort of play here. Would you protect if you're right here, though? I don't think you would. I think you would just attack. Precipice Blaze will get Finny. I think we've got to just hope that we're... F uh, or... Do we protect? And think that you're going to attack into our Rayquaza. I don't think you do, you know. I think... Like, I want to go the other way around. I want to protect Groudon, expecting that the, the Dragon Ascent to come into that slot. Yeah. And I'm going to go for... A Dragon Ascent into the Ray. Even though we'll probably see a Heal Pulse. But if we can get one Dragon Ascent into that opposing Rayquaza... I could be overthinking this by a mile here, but I've got to make some sort of play because we're in such a bad position right now. Um, if we can get one Dragon Ascent into the Rayquaza, then we might be able to get like extreme speed onto it the next turn. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, it's going into us. This should just proc a berry, which it does. Perfect. Okay. We should have dragon. We should have precipice bladed. We should have precipice bladed with our Groudon. What are we doing? Oh. We shouldn't play this protect game. So you get a huge, huge. I'm just gonna see a heal pulse. Yeah. <clears throat> We're just gonna see an extreme speed once again now. From now you target. I think. <laughs> right. Well. What can we take? I think we can just about take another extreme speed. I'm gonna press with blades. No, we can't because we just dragon ascended. We'll never be able to do it. We'll never be able to do it. Um, okay, I think we need to we need to earth power the finny and protect our Groudon. And this is where we lose because then they target the Groudon now, <laughs> expecting our raid to protect. If we can get rid of this blinking finny, it makes our lives a lot easier. Yeah, I mean that's it. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That's what you do, and then you just go for, yeah. Uh, the last turn was the turn where we could have, we could have really taken, and we could, to be honest, we could have just dragon ascended here, and then we would have got rid of the ray because of the drop. Yeah, but then we probably lose our own Rayquaza to the Moon Blast. Yeah, so there's no, there's no winning now. There is no winning now unless they go Dragon Ascent and we can outspeed them and then take a Moon Blast on minus two, which I doubt we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, here we go. This will take us down. Oh, that's a shame. Good game to my opponent. Right, that is a shame. Nice, entertaining battle at least, but I think definitely one we could have won. We've just taken the wrong road in different places, but good game to Nick. Uh, we're going to wrap things up there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know your comments down below of what you thought of today's games. Again, we're one and one, so I'm not really, I'm not really super happy about that, but uh, it's something we can only improve on for the rest of the week. We'll be back tomorrow with more Ray Dawn action, so come back, check it out tomorrow. Have a great day in between, and I'll see you all then. So until then, take care and bye-bye.